So let's get right to it. Yeah. Let's go right to defensive tackles. It. And um, let's just go right to number five. Let's yeah. just get Texas right into A&M. it. Texas A&M. Uh, Gigam Aggies, Demarvin Le- Leal, 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 Leal. Okay, Leal. I'm sorry to uh, Demarvin. I'm I'm still working on some of these rookies pronunciation. Pronunciation. You put but him yes. in the top five though. But so. he is a top five. Yes, and welcome to the Chris Sims Unbutton Top Five at defensive tackle. He's a really good football player, a really good athlete. I think he's gonna like. This is a guy that's gonna be more loved by the true four three teams more than the teams that might ask you know the three four ish type of stuff. But when you talk about like good athlete great looking body looks like an athlete and he's a hybrid Ahmed that's what I would tell you more than anything to me it's like it's it's defensive tackle for teams that like you know smaller faster let's create havoc defensive tackle it's strong side defense and who knows no we like gigantic D tackles and we like our strong side DN to be like basically an athletic D tackle that's to me what DeMarvin Leal is he really is and uh he's he's an impressive specimen some people list that as a negative, right? Like yeah. a tweener is like, right. oh, we don't know. He can't right. do either one. You think there's a chance he can do a little bit of both. I do think so. I don't think it's I, – I think this is a true, you know, again, Seattle scheme, that kind of scheme. They're going to love him at three technique. And then, oh, okay, wait, this week we're playing a team that can really run the ball. We might ask you to play DN, but the rules aren't going to really change. You know, I think with this kid, you know, get off is good. I'm not like, oh, it's wow. He doesn't show great ability to do that two-gapping stuff that we've talked about. But, you know, for a guy that's 283, takes on double teams pretty good, you know, and has explosion and the ability to change directions and take on blocks and be in awkward positions and still create havoc, I think that's what I liked about him a lot. Struggled a little bit when he faced Evan Neal and Charles Cross, but yeah. who wouldn't? Right, right. Sure. Um, give us an idea here, because you said the offensive lineman, you talked about that last podcast with Paul. You said there might be six, seven, eight yeah, first maybe round eight talent first guys. Rounders, right. You got number five here, Leal. Yeah. First round talent? No. So, no. Yeah, no. I think we're talking about a guy here that's kind of mid second, somewhere yeah. in that range. I would, I would like it. You know, it's kind of the players that I look at him like. William Golston, maybe, right, for the Bucks is like that kind of guy. Uh, there's the, you know, Draymond Jones uh, from Ohio State a few years ago. You know, he's another guy similar to that type of guy where, yeah, he can rush the passer. He can stop the run on the strong side if he is at the end for those teams that value a little more athletic three technique defensive tackles. He can go in there and be disruptive and, and create some havoc. Now, Preston Abbott asked a question, kind of what you mentioned here. He's a little bit of a tweener, can do both. Yeah. Um, if you viewed him as an edge guy, he says, where would you have him ranked? So now edge, we yeah. think there are some really – there's He's, some good. There's some good. He'd be down the list a little bit there that way. He would not crack your no, top five. No, not as far as what, what I take the edge and like, you know. Again, it's it's hard as far as uh, I'm trying to encompass something that the whole league would like and makes sense the most for all those guys. You know, there's some guys that are gonna look at this guy. I'm sure and go, hey, he's defense end for us. This is what he is. Four three crash end, strong side defense end. That's what he is. But he's not like the kind of guy that I think you're gonna look at quite yet and go, oh well, he's just he's gonna might have the ability to go around the edge and be a 12 sack a year type of guy. No, that that's not what he is. He's more D tackle with some splash of DN. How many first round guys you got here? You think in this group? Uh, I think three legitimately. Three. I think our top three. Uh, will definitely go in the first round. Maybe four. The the All guy right. we're going to talk about here in a second, I think has some talents to, to kind of get into that conversation. Let's do it. The yeah. guy that's on the fringes of the first round for two, uh, for for you, for a defensive tackle. And if you had trouble with the name Leal, I know. this one's going to Go be... ahead. You lead the way here. <laughs> Let me just piggyback off of this one. Ioma? Yeah. Awazurike. Awazurike. I- Ioma Wazurike. This was Iowa State. Iowa State. I love this kid. Like, from your hometown, first off. Detroit, Michigan. He's from right? Detroit. Right? Plays like a Detroit, Michigan guy. Tough. Tough. Can play every position on the defensive line. Eight mile. I mean, yes. Long ass arms. Explosive get off. Six six, three sixteen. Usually guys that long, I go, well, you know, how good are they gonna be like taking on double teams or when a you know a compact powerful lineman gets on them two of them what it's gonna I mean guy is a player first off in that area he can he arguably might be the best two gapper in the draft and what I mean by that his ability to stand people up 
and then just throw him to a side and disengage and do that. He's 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 up there with the best in the draft that I've seen so far. You know, his arm and length, his length and his arms and his power and his upper body are really special. And then his get off, I mean, it's one of those things when you look at the get off on film, you go, wait, was that is that the guy? The guy that nose tackle to start the film here? He's the guy I'm looking at? Whoa, I mean, he really exploded off the football. So there's real thing there. So you talk about the get off and then his ability and the upper body and the strength, he gets under people's pads a lot and controls them, drives them back into the quarterback, does that. Phenomenal football player. Um, and like I said, every scheme – Almost every position other than true weak side pass rusher, this guy can play on your defensive mm. line. So versatility for this guy, the, the yeah. top two or the bottom two on your top five list here. Have yeah, some, this some is a different type of versatility, though. Okay, how so? Well, like this guy could play shade nose and nose tackle and line up right over. And you go, whoa, he's got the power and the strength to handle that kind of fight. But then, you know has the ability, too, to go, okay, like we were talking about with DeMarvin Leal a minute ago, now let's just line up here and shoot this gap and just win that gap. And he's got the explosive ability and, and twitch to do that, too, to be disruptive. So I go three technique in a 4-3, shade nose in a 4-3, true nose tackle in a 3-4, and then 3-4 defensive end where you're like head up on the offensive tackle and you will be asked to two gap. D dude's a player, man. This was He's never on the ground. He plays hard. Um, he, he, to me, was one of the pleasant surprises of the draft. I didn't think I was – when I turned on the film, I wasn't going, oh, I'm expecting to see a top five-ish type of guy here. And – no, oh, I was pleasantly surprised by surprised. the film. Yeah, all, I mean, look at the Iowa game. Best center in the draft, first round guy. I mean, he he gave Linderbaum all he can handle at that position. I would bet you that he would say, "Oh, that was definitely the hardest guy I had to block all year." Interesting. Right. Okay. All yeah. right. So you like what you saw on film, yep. on tape. You talk to people that know him too, off the field I, too. I, I, I mean, a little. I've talked to people about him because I talked to him a little bit with the other day when I got done with him, sure. and I was going. Have you got, you know, I sent out one of those texts to if you're, have you watched the Iowa State kid? Yeah. And then got some people feedback. love him off the field. Yeah. I haven't talked to him, but if you, you read about people who have, um, his father died when he was 2019, had a, had a troubled life. Um, Ioma, he struggled academically when he was in college, but okay. in 2021, he was named to the academic all conference team. First person from his family to graduate from wow. college. And wow. so it's like the scouts have raved about, you, know, the, you look at the character. And this is something that you can't evaluate with the tape. No. But, uh, you know, sometimes almost but you, you can sometimes. You can, right? You can. This no doubt about has it. a drive and a want yes, to. Yes, I'm glad you said that. You can. You could see a little bit into the person when you watch it on film. Like, you could see a guy that doesn't give up. It's always, you know, you know pedal to the metal. You know, understands his job and what to do doesn't do his job you can see when they don't care when they care when they don't care right so yes i mean when you say these things i go well his play kind of looks like he takes Makes a lot sense. of pride in it and is very professional with it so a wazarike fringe first, fringe round first rounder talent. i think yeah top 40 pick for me he is and if there's a team there sitting at the end of the first round that's looking to improve their d line and needs some inside value type of guy yeah, he's he's the guy for me. I was very impressed with this football player. And like uh, what I would say, floor. I mean, the, the 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 great thing is, I think he's one of the safer picks in the whole draft. The floor is extremely high. Hmm. You're going to get a really good player. You might get that Pro Bowl All Pro All Pro, all pro player. Yeah. I'm not saying the ceiling's like whoa through the roof, but I think it's like starter high-level starter for a long time. All right, let's get to your first-round guys, maybe the guys with more upside now. Number three in your defensive tackle rankings is, is staying here in Connecticut right here for this one, Travis Jones, Connecticut. A Connecticut guy, too. A Grew Connecticut up in New guy. Haven. I know. Stayed close to home yep. and dominated. Many people said he was the best player on that team. Well, you, I would have a hard time believing that uh, there was too many people better than him. That's for sure. <laughs> I mean, we're talking about... You You're know, saying that's not a great compliment to the man? Well, it's it's <laughs> that team is not the best team in the world. That's true. Uh, but this dude, this is special. I mean... Uh, first off, you, if you, anybody's watching on YouTube, I mean, all you got to do, this is one of those guys when you turn it on, you go, whoa, wait, wait, he's 325 and moves like that? Okay, whoa, okay. 
So that's that's the first thing you just jump out. But huge body, great looking body, a little different in, you know, it's big butt, a little more in the middle, you know, high kind of a high waist, long arm, so to paint a picture from you that way. You know, change direction. It's it's off the charts good for that eight, for that size. I mean, he's a really good athlete. All right. You know, he's um well, I won't get into that. I was going to compare him to some guys we got coming up here in a minute. Uh, but, but like, you know, the arm length and the two gapping is the first thing. And this is another thing, again, where you got to kind of watch and know what you're, the player's being asked to do. He doesn't always get the green light to just fly up the field and go create havoc. They asked him to stand there, plug the middle, make it a mosh pit. You know, then when you see the guy coming your way, we want you to throw that 300 pounder off of you and make mm. the tackle. That's all we're asking you to do. Big yeah. deal. And he does it. You know, he is really special in that department. So, you know, this is a guy a little raw, you know, but I mean, he's a dancing bear in the middle of the uh, middle of a defense and a guy that can win with power, can win with, hey, just stand there and hold the point of attack. And also is athletic enough, I think, to where you're going to go, hey, just shoot the gap. We just want you to win that gap and do that and create havoc and get upfield. He's going to kind of do it all that way. But I think it's his size, you know, to be able to move that way with that size that makes him pretty special and a for sure first rounder. A lot of the times with these defensive tackles, too, it's how often can you use them? How much of the game can they play? Yes. This guy started as a true freshman, played in 10 to 12 games, and he played a ton last year, 50 or more snaps in a game. So, I mean, how often are you looking at that? For a defensive tackle, it's like, I want my guy to be on the field, especially when you're playing in college most of the game. This is why this guy, and we're going to have another big guy coming up in a little bit, that, like, the, there's, like, people got to stop with this, like, well, I don't know about his pass rush value. You're this big, this powerful, like, there's real value with these guys. Tell, ask a quarterback what it's like to uh, drop back on third down with Vita Vea in, in Tampa Bay right now. Yeah. Ask him how that feels. So I was going to ask him about his pass rush value because you know that that's where there's great value and yes the kid's got a motor you know he can pull in so yeah I don't think there's going to be any like oh first and second down we got to take him off the field on third down I think he's got all around three down value and you know the two gapping is it's him I would probably say him and the kid we just talked about from Ohio State that were the uh, Iowa State that were the best at it they were phenomenal that way. Once this guy gets his arms on you and gets his arms locked out, like and gets in this position, night night. See you later. He's gonna do whatever he wants with you. So um, that that's where he's a really good football player. And I think once he unleashes and gets used to playing, or you know, just what do I want to say? Just gets unleashed as far as. You don't always have to read it and two gap it and do all that stuff. He's going to create more havoc and disruption than than the college film shows. A lot of people like him. Pro Football Focus described him as a quintessential block of granite at nose tackle with a touch of pocket pushing ability thrown yeah, in. Right I think there. it's going to be more than that when it's all said and done. I do, um, but yeah, he's he's got it all, and he's got I think more potential to tap into as an athlete too. You know, I think just as far as how they use them and everything that way, the awareness in the backfield's big for me with these guys, yeah. right? Because they got to hold people up, and then it's like, are you? Do you see the ball? Do you know where it's coming? He was really good in that area. So, um, yeah, I just uh, big guy throws people off him. Athletic, it's kind of a no brainer, and he's gonna fit with a three four or four three. It doesn't really matter, and I would think he goes somewhere. 20 to 32. Um, 20 to 32. That would be about the range I would see. Yeah, maybe 18 to 32, somewhere in that range. Where do your top two guys go, you think? Ooh, I think these top two guys, okay. And I mean, really, this is, I don't even know which one's top two. I, I have a hard time differentiating. The Georgia guys, okay. Let's just get into it. To me, which are is, both it, top 10 talents. Well, both of them. In the entire draft. The entire draft. These are two of the 10 best players in the NFL draft. And the Georgia D tackles deserve to be in that conversation. I mean, the first one, let's hit on number two, Devontae Wyatt from Georgia. You know, so much gets made about some of the other guys in their football team. I, I, I guess I just, you know, again, as a casual football watcher during the season, I guess I just didn't really realize how freaking good this guy is. Devontae Wyatt is like, 
The film is as good or better than Quinn and Williams, who was the three pick of the draft a few years ago coming out of Alabama. It's it, to me, it's when I walked away, I just went, I don't understand why why are people not talking about this guy more? It's the film's better than Quinn and Williams. He was a slam duck. Like people were going, well, maybe Quinn and Williams will be the number one pick of the draft. I mean, or number two pick. You're hearing all those type of things. This guy's every bit as worthy in that department. I mean, two gapping stuff, which they asked him to do, right? Mm-hmm. That's not his cup of tea. This is not what like he's he's put on earth to do in this department. His cup of tea is it's Warren Sappish type of stuff. It's that kind of guy. It's three technique, like we've talked about. You're so explosive off the ball and quick with your hands and we you know, explosive in awkward positions. We want you just to create havoc and just mess up the play. That's what this guy can be. I mean, he was phenomenal. As I would say, he's a mess up the play guy. He's you a, don't you don't call it the same. thing. I don't thing. call it the same thing. He's kind of a <laughs> up the play guy, but yeah, I mean, you know. and he's not that big. I, mean, I, he's not, I like. In I know. Land well, of that's giants. what's funny when we say, yeah, I mean, he's not that big. He's three oh four in I a know. land of yeah. giants. He's three oh four, but yeah, his his height, you know, weight, wingspan, arm length, all that stuff is is lesser than yes, average. That's why there's going to be some teams that are going to go. I don't like love that guy. He's going to be a little bit of a to me the four three team. You know, again, the Seattle scheme teams, the teams that, you know, live in that li- life. I don't think, like, the New Englands of the world are going to like Devontae Wyatt, where they want that guy to stand him up and, and do all of that. This is more of you just got to unleash this guy and let him just f*** the play up, like you just said, and in your own words, yeah. and let him do that. <laughs> don't that, put that, words that's in what my he mouth. Is. I know, I won't. Um, elite, yeah. elite athlete, Ahmed. Elite. First step is as good as it gets in this draft class, yes. according to Pro Football Focus. Uh-huh. Explosive there. Here are some of the me- measurables if you're watching on YouTube or uh, or on Peacock. The 40-yard dash in the 97th percentile, 10-yard split, 93rd percentile. So very athletic guy getting off the ball. Uh, a-, a lot of people like him. So um, you like him so much. I know. Well, And it's no mystery why Georgia – was a good team last year. I'm looking at all these position rankings, especially on the defensive side. I was like, some of them, they're like three Georgia dudes. Like, it's the greatest even, college defense three. in the history of football. The greatest college defense in the history of college football. Talent-wise I mean, or in execution? Well, a, a little bit of both. Yeah. I mean, you could really go with Because Kirby Smart's a hell of a coach. Sure. I, I would honestly go like, Kirby Smart, he could have, uh, the way they play their scheme-wise this year might have actually hurt this group. Because it, with the way he plays his scheme is great. But this is a group that was so good and could have just steamrolled everybody that they could have played like just sh- everybody shoot a gap and they'll never move the ball on us ever, and they would have dominated. But like that, it's amazing, Amin. It's amazing. I mean, I'm I'm gonna you know, we got two Georgia linebackers coming up later in the draft. Right. Yeah, I mean, I don't. And some mean, people have three I, Georgia I, linebackers. I, I, that they I really hear like. you. But quick, aggressive hands as a pass rusher are dangerous. The ability to bend around the edge is that of a defensive end, a like a good pass rushing defensive end for 307. The size concern, like you're talking about, right. it's pretty damn good as far as taking on double teams. You know, he the way he can get off the ball and explode, he can stop that momentum with the double team to a degree. So, uh, and I and as I went on, I wrote, man, I mean, the guy has enough strength and power that you could play him at shade nose tackle if you had to, and and do that. And then I kind of ended it off as just like, why is this kid not getting more buzz? I mean, he reminds me of Quinn and Williams, but the film is better. So, and I just wasn't expecting to see that. I wrote, and then change of ability, change of direction ability off the charts, you know, and then any negative plays to me that I came down to, and there's very few negative to begin with. It's just like, you know, it's the same thing where you've heard me talk about this before. He's in this gap. And when they say set hut, they want you to go two gaps down to the right and, oh, stop there with a guy that's 300 pounds on your back when it's time to stop. And that's not always that easy. He's not going to be doing that t- stuff a ton in the NFL. Awesome player. Top 10 pick for me. Top 12, top 15, whatever. Definitely one of the best defensive players in the draft. So you like him a lot. I do. I mean, it's almost Clearly. like 1A-ish. Clearly. Okay. Yeah. All yeah. right. So there is a reason, though, why you have Jordan Davis, his Georgia teammate, Ahead of him, even if it is slightly. Yeah. So let's get to your number one, number one player. The big boy, Jordan Davis. I, I just, you know, 
I, there's not many people I think that you can ever compare to in this in the, in the history of the NFL draft to this guy. This is uh, this is where I look at it as special size wise, size wise, and then the athleticism on top of it. Like you just heard me talk about Vita Vea, right? Excuse me, I'm drinking coffee. Vita Vea. I can't remember exactly where he got drafted. I want to say 20s, right in there. Maybe Matt, if you could, if you could look that up, but. My point is, if Vita Vea was redrafted and we all knew what he was going to be, like you'd go, oh, that's top five, top ten pick. Like, you know, 12. You know, he was 12. That's what it was. This is a better Vita Vea. You draft Vita Vea earlier. This is Vita Vea with another notch up in all athleticism areas with more what I would call range. You know, Vita Vea can explode off the ball and push the pass rush and, and you know, hold his ground versus double teams and do all that. That's cool. Jordan Davis can do all that. The difference is Jordan Davis, you could do a toss sweep to Alvin Kamara, and he could be like, what? Okay, hold on. I got to make a right turn, and I'm going to run this mother ever down right at the line of scrimmage and go down the hill, down the sideline, and run him down and make the tackle there. So that's where I say the range part. Like, it's really rare to see all of these things together. I mean – it's the most proportionate 340 I've ever seen. I mean, agile, pliable. I mean, they ask him to shoot gaps and do athletic things. He does it at a very high level. You know, has a real ability to change direction and redirect. You know, can win with the quicks uh, like we talked about. But, you know, quicks or power can do it. Like, that's what's weird. You mm -hmm. see him steamroll somebody early in the game, Ahmed, and then four plays later – you see him do like a shake and break somebody's ankles. And you go, are you kidding me? Like he just steamrolled the guy and now he's breaking his ankles. So that's where he's special. Then you, know, you get into the two gapping stuff and the double teams. I mean, what do you think? Do you think the guy at 341 is going to be good at double teams? Seems likely. Yeah, right. And 34 inch arms and two gapping. It to me is just like it's a can't miss like. It's just he's he's phenomenal, and yes, I, I do think he's a, a top 10 pick in the draft. I mean, look at this. We show the measurables of all these guys, and the more green you have, the better it is. It means you're more elite at more things. This is basically all green. Yeah, it's a circle almost. It's I, almost a circle. And, and then here's what I'm worried about with this. Oh, you know, Just what you were just talking about a few minutes ago. Oh, third down pass rush. There's going to be teams that are going to try to like say that. Well, he didn't play a whole lot. I know. Right? I mean, well, and, and, and some people say it's because he wore down. Maybe he wasn't conditioned. Sure. You're going to have to, like, watch it a little bit. I mean, you know, he's not going to be able to, If you have an 80-snap game, yeah, he's not going to be able to play 80 snaps. He's not going to be able to do that. But, like, will he be able to play 65 of them? I do think so. I do. I didn't come away looking at it going, man, this big sucker runs out of gas a lot. I, I did not, like, think that was an overwhelming factor for me. John Yohanahan? Yeah. Hi, Ahmed. You should brush your tw teeth twice a day. There. I agree with that. You should. You should. I do it in the morning. I've done right. it for you. I do right. it for you before every pod. Remember this, too. But is Jordan Davis only a two-down player? No. Can he be asked to rush the passer on obvious passing downs? Yeah, he can. He's... He didn't want to just make the point about my brushing teeth. He that, wanted to also make good. a point It's well about... said. It was a good question and a good <laughs> statement altogether. Yeah. Yes, he's going to be able to do all that. Even the, this, the, the NFL game, harder, better... The pace isn't always the same either. You know, the pace is not always the same. College, I mean, what? Yeah, every get up the huddle, fit on. Let me look at sideline. We're gonna run this play. Get up the let's line up the line of scrimmage. I mean, that doesn't play in the favor of a guy like Jordan Davis. Sure. The NFL game's not like that. That's that's you know this okay. There's a few games here and there you're gonna see. You know, the offense is also conscious of what the defense is doing in the NFL a little too to go like oh, all right, our defense is on the field. Well, let's run the ball here and, and rest them. There's more of a complete game here that way so it's a less of a concern for me and yes he's going to be able to rush the passer he is he's going to be a pain in the ass you know you're going to be able to find alignments and go okay we we got an alignment here to where it's him on the center on third and eight are you kidding me like and all you got to do we don't want you to worry about the run all you got to do is shoot off the ball and push the guy back when when he has clips of like that it's like see you later you're done i mean it, it's freaky um how high would you draft him like, what would be the highest point if a team needed a stud in the middle I mean, on I, defense? I mean, again, I'm, I mean, maybe I'm in the minority here, but I, I mean, I, I wouldn't be afraid to go with the top five with this guy. I would not. 
I don't know. I guess I'm I'm different that way. But to me, where it gets lost is this: D tackle is being underrated in my eyes in the the draft evaluations, the media, you know, and even with some teams. Uh, usually, really good teams have good D tackles, right? Like mm-hmm. Super Bowl, you can start right there, right? I mean, definitely can DJ Reader. I mean, he was a huge part of why Aaron Donald what he did there. You know, the 49ers, to go D tackles, right? They got to – oh, what did the Kansas City Chiefs got? Oh, Chris Jones, right? The D tackle can affect every play. That's where people are, to me, are, are missing the ball a little bit. Like, they're, you run right or run left, they're still there in the middle ready to do that. Then the pass game too. So, to me, there's more value there than I think what – the general public thinks of the position. Have there just been some misses lately at that position? Have uh, you know? I don't I'm know. Thinking like Javon Kinlaw injury. You know, it's yeah. like you have weight issues. Maybe I mean, at but that okay, position. the number. So I can continue along the other way. Like so, the number two defense in football. Guess what they did a few years ago? Drafted Derek Brown and the defensive tackle at number seven of the draft. Mm-hmm. I mean, this guys. These two to me, the Georgia guys are every bit in that class of type of player, or the Quinn and Williams, like you heard me talk about. Yeah. So, yeah, you're right. I don't know. There hasn't really been the misses right. or anything like that that I can that can jump out to me. It's just not sexy, and you can't always sell it to your fan base either because of sacks and production and people. That's all they talk about. Um, but you know, the like we were talking, the D tackles around the ball a lot. Top five is complete on the defensive tackle side. Two Georgia guys. They're one and two. You got Travis Jones from UConn, number three. You think all three of those guys are first round talents. Maybe four is a fringe and five is in the second round. Yeah. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.